Hello everybody, welcome to Marketing Analytics course. This is Dr. Shagadu Chatterjee from Vijiso Mighty Kharagpur who is taking this course. We have come a long path and we are now in week 10. And uh, on this week and in the next week, actually in two weeks, we will be discussing about text mining and various applications of text mining and natural language processing in the context of analytics, uh, in the context of marketing analytics. So, text mining in the context of marketing analytics is applied in, in majorly applied uh, because that uh, with the, with the uh, I would say internet availability of people and information and digital uh, technologies being spread all over the world, every person can express their feelings, express their information. So, that is why information is getting generated from various corners of the world and often those uh, information is unstructured. So, what is structured data and what is unstructured data that is something that we have to understand uh, from an analytics perspective. Uh, structured data are those kind of data which are uh, kept in a tabular form which is well, uh, well put and I would say the various kind of statistical analysis can be done ready made that the data is ready made for any, any kind of statistical analysis. On the other hand unstructured data is something which is not been given a form that can be used for data analytics yet. So, that is something that is a problem for a analytics person what he has to do is he has to convert the unstructured data to some form of structural format and then with that structural format he can do statistical analysis. One of the examples of unstructured data is this text data. So, consumers or individuals create text data in the context of marketing quite a lot. For example, uh, customers write reviews. They can write, write reviews in let us say Yelp.com or, or TripAdvisor.com or various e-commerce websites they write reviews. Now, these reviews are text, they are unstructured data, you do not have a proper tabular format for this particular data. To analyze this data, you have to convert this unstructured data in some form of structural format and then you have to analyze. Another example will be pictures. For example, again various in, in influencer marketing, it is very well used that people post pictures. And you have to understand that whether the picture, what, what the picture is saying or what kind of uh, brands are more prominent on those pictures and what is the level of prominence of the brand. So, all of these things will contribute towards the uh, brand image when influencer marketers are actually posting their pictures. So, that is something uh, that that excites uh, marketing professionals and that is also one kind of unstructured data. Another type of unstructured data can be videos or audios. So, video and audio both are unstructured data where people take a decision that how I will actually, what, what this particular video is saying, whether this video is uh, 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 saying some action or video is saying some product, whether I can find out what kind of action is happening from this particular video and so on. So, there can be so many different types of insights that you can generate from this unstructured data and the whole world is filled with more unstructured data than structured data. So, structured data will only be created when we forcefully capture the data and put it in a tabular form. But there if you capture 10 percent of the world's data, you are not capturing probably 90 percent of the world's data. And that data is still lying idle in various parts. All you have to do is you have to capture them, change them in some way and create a structured data. So, that is something which even in the marketing context we have to do. So, customer reviews is one such unstructured data text where text is involved and we will do natural language processing and text mining to do that. Another places where the text comes up is blogs, consumer rights, blogs, travel logs are created, blogs are created, whether these blogs are working well or blogs are good or blogs are bad, that kind of thing uh, makes sense. Another classic application of, of marketing, of text mining in the context of marketing and text mining is, is, is let us say clickbait. If you have heard about clickbait, what is a clickbait? Have you heard about this kind of posts uh, where people say that 
five ways to uh, kill mosquitoes without using any kind of uh, mosquito repellent or 10 ways to become successful in the world without doing anything. So, these kind of posts are actually called clickbaits, where they are baits, they are driving you towards them, so that you click on them. What happens is when you click on them, you go to a website and then that website is filled with various kinds of advertisements. The only purpose of this clickbait is to attract traffic towards them and the moment traffic comes to that particular website, they make some money. That is all is their purpose. Now, various uh, uh, various platforms like Facebook and etc. is trying to stop these clickbaits. That how I can identify the clickbaits ahead, ahead of time, and then I can block them so that people do not click them or my the 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 content uh, I would say the the content that is being shared in Facebook, the quality of the content does not go bad, or oftentimes violence identification in if it is a picture or let us say nudity identification if it is a picture. All of these things can be done using various kinds of unstructured data mining. Text mining is done for clickbait, text mining is done for sentiment mining, for spam detection and various other stuff. So, here in the in the in the next few uh, hours, we will discuss about how we can used natural language processing and text mining techniques to to implement it in the in the real world situation now there is a difference between text mining and natural language processing what is natural language processing it is a at the area of uh, of uh, computer science or linguistics you can say where people try to find out how we talk how we write based on that information they will process some text in general, text mining is the broad area. Any text you mind that, whether that has been made by human being, whether that has been created by machines, whether that has been created by some, some, some website writers, any kind of mining of any text is text mining and there are certain processes for that. When you do the same thing, text mining, keeping in the mind of linguistic characteristics of the text, that whether the guy is, for example, when I write. I write my written text, you will see that they are often grammatically correct. When I am speaking, I am not even completing a sentence. Sometimes I say that okay, this, 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 this and then after some time, I break the sentence and go on in a different context altogether. So, the sentences are also not full when we go and say something. Even for this particular course, if you go and see the transcript of the course. I think there are transcripts being created by NPTEL office. So, you go and see the transcripts of the text and not only my transcripts, you can see any other professor's transcript, you will see that the transcripts are not full sentences. Now, that is a text that is getting created from the linguistic characteristics of verbal communication. The same thing will be absolutely different when you just analyze the my emails, my formal emails, my SMSs my informal charts, the type of linguistic characteristics that can will come up from this kind of text will be very different. Now, when you do text mining, keeping this kind of characteristics in mind, it is actually natural language processing. So, how naturally we create language or we use language, how that knowledge can be used while you are doing text mining to create insights about the text that particular domain is natural language processing. Now, we have come up a long path in natural language processing, but there are lots of other things that has to be done in natural language processing also. So, we will in this particular section, we will discuss about that. So, NLP and some text mining methods and introduction is something that I will discuss in this particular class first. So, the what is NLP? So, natural language processing is a subfield of artificial intelligence used to aid computers to programmatically understand the human's natural language. So, that is the major goal. What is the goal? To programmatically understand the human's natural language and to process and analyze large amounts of natural language data. So, ideally 
there was always qualitative uh, studies were done and in qualitative studies let us say a focus group discussion is happening, five people are sitting in the room and they are discussing. Generally what we used to do is we used to take take uh, uh, pointers on them, we used to record their particular audio whatever they are saying, transcribe it and then there was one person who is to read and do content analysis on them. So, what kind of things are coming up by simple reading. Now, see if there are five persons doing this job of creating information and there is one person who is getting the information from the text of five persons conversation, then that is doable. The moment it becomes 500 persons or 5000 persons or 5 lakh persons, it becomes very difficult. It becomes very difficult for one single human being to do this. Now, you can say that okay, why will I put one single human being? I can put 10,000 human beings, then the interhuman being reliability will go down. So, whatever he thinks, person 1, the, the analyzer 1 thinks as a positive sentiment and whatever analyzer 2 thinks as positive sentiment, their level of positivity might be different, their thresholds might be different and then the analysis will have some amount of bias depending on who is analyzing it. So, then to solve that problem, we need a program, but the program has to have human level understanding of, of whatever being the being whatever is being talked in the text. So, a very a, a word very good, it is a very good can be it can be said in various terms, there can be sarcasm, there can be really good and etcetera. So, let us say I pass a, I, I, I give an exam and in that exam I score very well. 90 out of 100 or more than that. I come and say, mom, I have scored 90 out of 100. Mom says, very good, very good, beta, very good. So, that is an actual very good pride and good sentiment, positive sentiment comes up. The same thing, if I says, mom, I got 40 out of 100 I says, and my mom says, very good, 40 out of 100, very good, very good. So, that is basically a sarcasm that mom is saying. Now, when I convert it into text, both are same, no, both are very good. So, if both are very good, both are the same text, then the text has to, the program has to understand by listening to the context that whether it is a sarcasm or actually true, which becomes very difficult. For a human being, it is possible. A human being, if you understand that 40 out of 100 and then it very good comes in, that means it is sarcasm. A human, when he reads the text, he will understand. But a program might not understand. So, you have to make the program understand in such a way such that he programmatically understands humans natural language and to process and analyze large amount of data. So, these two things large amount of data programs can handle, but program cannot handle humans natural language when these two things you try to uh, bring in into the picture both are done at a suitable level of analysis, then you are doing natural language processing well. So, data in question in this case can be any unstructured data. It can be voice, it can be chat, it can be social media data, Facebook or any product or news. So, so this kind of a data can be analyzed using natural language processing. The history is way back in 17th century. So, it is, it is being done for quite some time. Philosophers such as uh, Leibniz and uh, Descartes place the proposal of codes to relate different language. So, this is something that has been be happening till from the 17th century. But those then remained theoretical, they were theoretical understanding. In 1930s, uh, George Arts Rowney using paper tape created the first bilingual dictionary. So, dictionary is also one type of natural language processing. The other proposal by Peter uh, Tronowski, a uh, Russian was more detailed. It included both the bilingual dictionary and rationale of grammatical roles between languages. So, slowly it evolved from 17th century, then 1930 it was some bit of empirical work and slowly it evolved in 1950. Alan Turing 
published the famous article Computing Machinery and Intelligence and had a mention of thinking capability of machine. So, now we are bringing in AI a little bit and in 1980s first statistical machines translation systems were developed based on statistical model and probably in the 1990s and etc. we have used that in Google also the translation of language from one language to another language and so on. So, what is the application of NLP? NLP can be applied in Gmail's auto reply for example, let us say somebody says Shaptoshi we can uh, we we came across a business problem there is a huge scope of drive value research let me know if you are interested. So, the moment somebody writes that it the see in Google at the bottom there are some text comes up automatically. So, you can just click on that and the reply goes up. So, yes I would be interested I am interested or not interested. So, these are auto replies. So, how I can get this auto replies you get that in chat so you get that in emails. So, that is where natural language processing comes into the picture. The same thing comes into the picture when you are typing. So, I am working for Tata consultancy and then the services is automatically written there. So, basically keyword keyboard next word prediction is also where natural language processing comes into the picture. Then Google translator. So, from language to bhasha natural language processing will come to the picture. Then IMDb movie review, if I want to know that what kind of genre it is or what kind of movie reviews it is coming up, what I should do, what I should not do, it comes into the picture. Again article recommendation, we have talked about recommendation engine, but we have not talked about how based on whatever text you are reading, how other uh, articles which are of similar topic or of your similar interest level can be populated that we have not discussed. That is also something that can be done using NLP. Another kinds of applications are spam email detection. This is something that we will do a case study on that. Trend analysis we, we can do probably or I will at least suggest that how to do it. Consulted chart chat text transcript analysis that is also something you can do to find out that whether people are working well or not, what is the customer sentiment and satisfaction level, what is the performance of the caller, what is the overall robot business problem identification, all of these things basically customer sentiment analytics, what customer wants, performance of the sales caller, all of these things can be done. And then the movie review, whether the movie has been positively reviewed or negatively reviewed, what are the key themes where they are giving positive reviews, what are the key themes where they are giving negative reviews, all of these things can be done using NLP. So, there are huge application of natural language processing in the context of marketing. So, when we do natural language processing there are certain steps. The first step is pre-processing. So, before you do any kind of text mining, you have to process the data so that it becomes usable. What are the processes various types of processes? The first job is clean the data. So, it is an unstructured I would say raw data and the data dump probably and you have to clean the data first that is the first basic job that you have to do. So, how to clean the data? Either you can get clean ASCII test that is the best uh, available otherwise you remove HTML markup pictures and advertisement. So, HTML markup may carry information to which can be extracted for example, whether it is a heading or whether it is a new paragraph or whether it is uh, it is a uh, link a, a, a email link or is a URL that kind that is actually given by this kind of signals B H those we have done a little bit of with HTML will know. So, you might not want to remove that also. If you want to remove, so you have to take a I would say very very informed call that what kind of HTML markups I will remove and what kind of HTML markups I will keep in my data set so that I can create certain information. For example, let us say one of these things will be let us say let us say in a in a in a any review there is a title of the review and then you will write the whole text. So, it is a very good movie and then you give a explanation about how good it is. 
Now, very good movie is the header that will come under delta uh, uh, H1 uh, markup and then the text is probably P paragraph. So, that H1 markup if you can copy it and analyze the title of the review separately and analyze the text of the review separately, then you might get newer newer information. So, this is something that you have to understand. Then automate this with wrapper induction. So, you might not want to do all of this manually data cleaning, you want to have a wrapper which will I will show you how to do it in the data mining process. What else? You can lemmatize or stem. For example, many words have the same key. For example, let us say if I so talk about uh, I am eating, I eat rice and uh, I have eaten rice. So, eating, eat, eaten all are eat basically. A verb, the basic form of verb is. So, when we transform the data to the basic core form of the word that is called stemming or limitizing. So, that is that can be done that is something that we generally do to know that which word is most occurring. So, if I put eating, eat and eaten to be different words and we try to find out word frequency or something, we want to know that how much time people are talking about eating when they are giving a review of a restaurant. Then if I keep these three words different, then they will be calculated differently. But if I lemmatize them, stem them and make all of this word to be eat, then I will know that the frequency is much higher for what people are saying. So, that kind of processing has to be done. For example, buyers, buyer or buying all of these things are related to buy. So, if I can lemmatize that then we will know that people are talking about buying a lot. Remove stop words. So, there are lots of words which are which are commonly used. So, example, I, you, he, she, am, uh, no, uh, not is not is also stop word, but sometimes we should not remove that. Or let us say, uh, let us say hi, hello, and there can be so many different kind of stop words. So, there is a stop words uh, dictionary that has been created by many various, uh, various I would say linguistic professionals or linguistic researchers. Basically, these are the words which does not contribute to any meaningful information in the text. So, we can remove the stop words while doing the text mining. Then find the named entities, for example, proper nouns, name of place, name of company, name of people, sometimes we want to filter that also, depending on the situation we want to filter. So, if I say that Rahul and I has, uh, have went to this hotel and this hotel was very good and we have uh, uh, enjoyed a lot and this and that, but this num Rahul has nothing to do in this whole text. So, I would rather not want Rahul to be in the text because this is a proper noun and I have nothing to do with that. So, on the other hand when I am doing in other context this Rahul name might be useful. Let us say I am uh, talking about a ch uh, chat transcripts or I am, I am analyzing the conversation of 3, 4 people. So, when we are converse, when 3, 4 people are conversing with each, each other, whom I am talking to can be found out from that Rahul name. So, sometimes it will be useful, sometimes it might not be useful, you have to take a informed decision that when I will keep it and when I will remove this particular thing from the text. I can resolve homonym also. So, synonym unification, all the synonyms can be joined together. Part of speech tagging, sometimes we want to filter out nouns, adjectives, verbs separately. For example, a classic example will be uh, in, 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 in the sentiment analytics, let us say we often I ask my students to do parts of speech tagging because let us say if I ask you that how will you rate this particular course? You rate this particular course based on the learning, based on the delivery quality, based on, based on the uh, probably uh, the, the attentiveness or, or, or the responsiveness of the uh, team and various other things. So, now think about this thing, the learning ability, the learning, the, 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 um, the, learning, the delivery of, the, uh, of, of this particular uh, course or the responsiveness, all of these things are noun. 
what is responsiveness it is a noun it's a it's a characteristics so let's say quality quality is a noun product quality is a noun product quality is good good is an adjective so you responsiveness is very 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 good or is very highly uh, very high responsiveness high is an adjective responsiveness is the noun so if i say that this book is very good the book is the noun and good is my adjective so often times we actually give sentiment of on a noun and the adjective gives me whether the sentiment is positive or negative and etc so if i can tag them based on the parts of speech of the lines then i will be knowing that whether people are saying positive or negative about this text so that is something which is very important and we have to understand that so stop or removal we have already talked about most steps are optional and application dependent so as i was telling you again and again that you have to understand that you will not apply all these steps you will choose which step to apply which step not to apply depending on the situation and i will show you in some situations some things will be applicable in some other situations something will not be applicable and many sentences steps are language dependent coverage of non english varies for example if by chance if there are certain things which are written in non english language then the stop words will be different the natural language processing of the same thing when i speak in hindi and the same thing when i speak in english might be very different and 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 the stop words might not exist in in hindi or let's say uh, or this this parts of speech tagging way of parts of speech tagging might be very different in hindi and english so we have to find out that it's a very language dependent activity the moment you shift the language the procedures the lemmatization and etc might be different so that you have to think about when you do language and free and open source tool and web apis exist for most steps so you do not have to code for most of these things there are already somebody has done created libraries we have been using libraries for various things so we will be using libraries here also you have to remember that marketing analytics course is not to create algorithms it is to apply already ready made algorithms in the context of marketing so that marketing decision making becomes easier we are not algorithm creators we are users of al already created algorithms then what is the text mining so they, this is how the structured data looks like and multimedia free text and hyper text each of them can be the source of information which is basically unstructured data so what we do here the first thing that we do when we do text mining is called creating bag of tokens so this is what where i will stop today after this particular slide and we'll con continue in the next uh, video so what we do first thing is we convert a document into token sets for example you see that in this particular thing nation has been used quite some time and then there is another word called civil another called called word so each of the unique words after removing stop word and punctuations and these and that whatever words are left we convert them to unique words and then the corresponding unique words frequency we also write so losses all order specific information and severely limits context so this is one way of analyzing but this generally limits the context of the data set and still this is though it limits the context of the data set this is one of the most used version of text mining and we will discuss about this in the next video thank you for being with me i will see you in the next video with term frequency and inverse document frequency and how tokenizing can help in text mining